One of the first known victims of Hurricane Sandy was 13-year-old Angela Dresch. Her body was discovered on this street. Neighbours in this house, Maria and Joe, say the loss is a devastating blow to the community. Well, the loss of life started over there. started from the house on the next block. And they, they were travelling, going through here, you know, screaming for help. But we came out, tried to help them, but it was so dark that the debris was flying in the air. We just heard a few cries. A few and cries then, for uh, help. We came out because the water wasn't on our deck yet. 1.30 in the morning, they found the baby in front of the house. Oh, I put those over with the other one. Here on one of the most damaged parts of Tottenville, Staten Island. Faculty from a local middle school have turned out to pick through the pieces, trying to salvage anything that families might want to keep. This is a memory card for camera, so hopefully. We're from PS1. We're offering bagels, we've buttered bagels, eggs, bacon, sausage, coffee, <laughs> fruit. Vincent Ignizio is a city councilman who is trying to coordinate this response, rallying the neighbourhood together, trying to get people what they need. The gas shortage is, is really becoming crisis situation down here because even people who want to volunteer and bring food for to other areas that are affected or whatever are stymied from doing so because they're afraid of wasting their own gas and then they're not going to be able to take their family around. Some people lost their homes, other people were fortunately spared. That's just the luck of the draw in the grim lottery that is Hurricane Sandy. One thing's for sure though, everyone's going to have to have a conversation with FEMA over the next couple of days. Michael's going to meet us down here. In fact, FEMA agents just arrived on scene this morning and we had the chance to follow them around. FEMA hit the ground today and, and uh, we are hopeful that they will help people with some transitional housing or being able to get some of their lives together. Talk to them, see what the issues are. The whole house was wiped down clean to nothing, everything. A tidal surge was over 11 feet and uh, from what I hear, uh, pretty much like a road wave just took the whole house down to the slate. I, I don't have, I'm still financially recovering from last year's flood. FEMA moves fast, but you can't move everybody that fast. So building, building the crews as every day, more and more of the crews are getting here because again, the airports are now opening up. And with an election just around the corner where big government has become a big issue, these residents say big government, FEMA, federal dollars, Bring it on. The federal government has to step in on this. They have to. We need, I need financial help from the, from the federal government. Unless they got a helicopter, I don't know how they're gonna get here any faster than anyone else. I mean, we're all suffering and it's difficult, you know, to travel. I'm sure that's gonna affect the election at this point. I mean, it's, you know what, whomever is gonna help me is definitely gonna, definitely gonna persuade me to go either way. If there's one thing that we've learned from Staten Island today is that the community is rallying together and they want us to tell the world about it. And they're not waiting around for FEMA, they're doing it themselves and they're doing it together. Well, I'll tell you, the response of the people in the neighborhood are just amazing. The church and PTAs and Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. I wouldn't cry for this because thank God we're alive, but I cry for all the generosity, the humanitarian that's been going on here is amazing. I, I can't even explain it. I don't know what else, I don't know what to say or do for them at this point.